Okay, I think we're live. Hey friends, uh, recording this from my home office and uh, today uh, friends from St. Peter's delivered masks to our house. Uh, I got a call a lot earlier this morning and someone said uh, they were making masks and uh, wondered if there was a way that we could distribute them. And I thought, I think we'll have to figure that out. And so uh, uh, that was that was one of the early calls. And then about uh, an hour or two later, I got another call and someone said, hey, uh, we're making masks and what can we do? So we're formulating a plan right now and uh, we don't have it fully in place, but if you are able and a seamstress and have a sewing machine and fabric and are able to do that, uh, I want to encourage you to let's start making masks. Uh, the other day when they were saying that it would be the recommendation for being in public, I thought, oh no, what are we going to do? Uh, and so if we can make some and be creative and share those, that would be awesome. So let me encourage that. Uh, tonight is our first night. We're going to go through this week, uh, Monday through Thursday, meeting here every night at seven o'clock, uh, just to spend a short time together in prayer and reading scripture. And, uh, it's a different journey to Holy Week this year. So what I want us to do is realize that Easter is on the horizon. What we typically have done is had really big blowout uh, Monday, Thursday with choir and all kinds of wonderful things, uh, uh, a Good Friday service, and then uh, in preparation for Easter, sunrise service and, and, and all that with crepes. Uh, that this year isn't gonna take place. And so rather than trying to do it really big online, uh, I want us to, this year do it a little smaller. And if we do it smaller, what we can do, realizing that this is already a season where we're all cloistered, um, how do we just take the steps forward? How do, how do we spend a little bit more time in reflection than just kind of going to services? And so I wanna encourage you, this is the Presbyterian planning calendar and throughout Holy Week, they have this. They have all these extra, you know, Monday of Holy Week, and you kind of go through. And, and these are all, because we're always so busy getting ready for Easter, these are ones that we just go, oh, well, we don't have time for that. We've, we've got to get ready. But this year we do. This year we do. And so what I want us to do tonight is to kind of walk through uh, a four-fold process. And we'll do it each night, the same. Uh, and... Uh, and there's gonna be a, a time to pause, so we'll get started. And then after we pause, we will create a posture, uh, and that's a posture of listening. Then we'll go to a prayer response. And finally, uh, I'll end each evening with a practice and talking a little bit about how do we go out uh, from here to, to, uh, to serve the Lord. So tonight we begin with the pause, and I have, I was saying earlier, I almost feel like Mr. Rogers, you know, because. I'm not going to put on a cardigan sweater, but I'm going to take time to just light this candle. And if you've got a candle in these coming nights that you could light, that'd be awesome. Part of it is just to slow down and realize that, that our lives typically move so fast and in such a hurry that to light a candle just gives us a reason to not be in a hurry. So I'm gonna put this right back here and I'm gonna let it burn all the way through the night, maybe an hour or two. Uh, but just as a reminder that, that this evening uh, that it belongs to the Lord and that uh, in coming together, uh, we're here to pause and to listen and to be together online, uh, but even more importantly, to just be open uh, to how God wants to be present with us now. And so as we've paused, let's now take the posture of listening to God's word. And the reading tonight comes from Isaiah 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he, he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. 
and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Going from Isaiah to the Gospel of John, our reading tonight comes from John's Gospel, the 12th chapter. I want to encourage you as we uh, have these readings to maybe follow along in your own Bible and uh, read along with me. Uh, but this is a, a fantastic story. John chapter 12 says this, Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Part of what I love about that story is this parallel that happens in the 12th chapter of John's Gospel, a parallel that we see also with chapter 13, where the motive of Mary and coming to anoint the feet of Jesus, the motive was pure love. It was a sense of devotion and wanting to do for Jesus out of this full heart. And so too, we see that Jesus also kneels at the feet of his, his disciples and he washes their feet. And the motive there again is, is pure love. On the one hand, uh, Mary is anointing with perfume and that fragrance is filling the house. Jesus takes and uh, washes, not a fragrant feet of his disciples, the smelly feet of his disciples, and his sacrifice is a sacrifice of service. 24 dirty feet. And I want you to think also of the two feet that he had to wash, the two feet of Jesus, and uh, of Judas, and, and the one who would betray him, and the kind of sacrifice that that would have required of him to continue on in love. As Mary was washing his feet with the perfume and pouring it out. She was drying them with her hair. And Jesus, on the other hand, was with a towel wrapped around him, was drying the feet of his disciples with that towel. But it was all because of great love. It was because he loved his disciples and Mary's sacrifice because she loved the Lord. And what's curious about this story to me, too, is that we get Judas kind of raising his voice and sounding like he was you know, has a righteous cause. What about the poor, you know? And, and he's a pretender. He's just saying it not because he really cares about the poor. He's saying it because he used to steal the money that went into the common purse. And how easy it is to, to see the difference in stressful situations. What are we really made of? Uh, uh, Judas continued to manipulate and to try to connive 
and, and, and find his way forward through dishonesty. And, and Mary just comes in pure vulnerability and pours herself out. Comes to the feet of Jesus and just, and just gives him this great gift. And, and Jesus receives it knowing the journey that was ahead for him. And so I want us to just pause and let this scripture from John's gospel inform our orientation in the world, that we would also be a people willing to enter into uh, sacrificial love and getting beyond ourselves, uh, not always calculating each thing that we do, but sometimes doing it out of pure generosity. But that generosity comes from God as we receive, we're able to give. And so let's now enter into a time of just prayer response. Lord, thank you for the gift of life that you've given the world through your example. But not just your example, but also through your sacrifice. Sacrifice of love upon a cross, that it's on that cross that the whole of our existence finds its meaning and purpose in the giving of your life for the life of the world. And so, Lord, we ask that as we take this journey to Easter that you would guide our steps and help us to ponder the wonder of your love and the grace that you've given. And so slow us down in the season. Help us in this time when fear seems to abound and surround and and its grip is so firmly upon us. Help us, Lord, to trust in you and to let our lives shine with the light of your love. And so, Lord, continue to save your people. Continue to be the Savior of the world, that love would abound and that we might participate in that even more fully. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So here's the thing. As we look around today, we see a lot of examples of real sacrifice and people getting out beyond themselves. It's, it's hard not to look at the uh, healthcare professionals and just be in awe. Uh, thank God they're doing the work that they're doing and all that we can do to support and encourage and to stay home in order to flatten the curve. I really believe uh, that is a part of our responsibility uh, as those who seek the common good. Uh, but I wanna invite you just as a practice uh, in the next 24 hours to do something out of sheer love for someone else, okay? We're all living at home, we're all cooped up, we're all like trying to just stay sane in the midst of all this. But I want you to do something that's extra generous for someone else and don't do it and wave a flag and see how great you were, but do it just because it's part of who you are as a follower of Jesus Christ. So that's the challenge. That's the practice. That's the how do we do something, maybe not as dramatic as Mary, but how do we do something beyond ourselves where we don't calculate the cost of all of it, but we do it just out of pure generosity. And so uh, that's my challenge for you. It's been fun to spend just a short time with you as I look at the number there. We have 24, and it's awesome. Uh, and I'm so grateful for St. Peter's by the Sea. I'm so grateful for the patience that you all, oh boy, <laughs> that you all had yesterday. Uh, if you watched our Palm Sunday service, it, it got finally posted in the afternoon. And uh, I've had a few people just say, oh, that's all right. And so uh, your graciousness uh, is so appreciated. So let's do this again tomorrow night. Uh, let's continue to care and love for each other, love each other. And, uh, and if you've got sewing skills, uh, let's see what we can do about getting masks made and getting them distributed uh, all across our church and even beyond uh, so that we would have what we need uh, to be good citizens in the world today. And so with that, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship, the communion, and the courage of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.